Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, Geeky, I don't think we're gonna be allowed to play Thirsty Sword Lesbians, the role-playing game. Well, I don't really play role-playing games that much, so it wasn't gonna impact me either way. I, I, I am really heartbroken that I am not allowed to play Thirsty Sword Lesbians. I mean, let's be honest, um, most people weren't gonna play Thirsty Sword <laughs> Lesbians. That's um, true. Uh, that they just weren't, it wasn't something people, people were gonna go run in to pick up. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about this. Evil Hat Productions, which is a tabletop game manufacturer slash publisher, uh, put this tweet out the other day. And you know, it's one thing to feel like uh, role-playing should be more diverse and inclusive. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to be a dick. spell it out. It's another thing to flat out say, we do not want you if you are not the right kind of customer. And oh, and that, also the get woke, go broke mantra. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of companies are, you know, they, they all found out how much of a bullshit mantra that was. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of seeing some companies uh, uh, pay for their uh, political uh, posturing. But and it's that's okay, what this is. they literally don't want your money. They so it's all money. good, but here's the thing, most people aren't gonna buy this damn thing anyway. <laughs> I don't think, I, look, and no, no offense, to uh, lesbians who are thirsty and also like swords. No, but, it sounds like a, that sounds like you know we should go hang out and cosplay sometime. Right, you know? right. Uh, but this is not going to be something on par with Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about uh, you know the utter state, I guess, of tabletop, and this is this is applicable to other industries too, to comics, to video games, whatever. Now they are a small company; they can say whatever they want to say. But when yeah. you flat out come out on Twitter and say uh, you know, there's no such thing as an apolitical game. And if, if you don't want politics in your games, then you're not allowed to buy our game. But then their list of, we'll go into it in a bit, their list of what the reasons are that you're a fascist is stupid because most people agree with a ha like a lot of the stuff in this list. Yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not genocide that that makes you a fascist. It's it's uh, uh, not, not liking fat people or something, something like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about. It. Yes. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over two hundred thirty-four thousand subs. Woo uh, thank you for the support. Now, before we get into thirsty sword lesbians, which I'm, I'm sure everybody's been dying to play this game. I never even heard of it until I got tagged in on this. Nobody has. Because um, I didn't care. The, the, the only reason they did it was to try to cause a non yes. to try to make to make sales. Yes. And then so they can say if it fails, it's because of bigots. Yes, uh, that's, that's exactly it. See, we kind of got dragged into this conversation um, because, you know, we've talked a lot about tabletop gaming and Wizards of the Coast in particular, that they've, they've gotten more and more political. Uh, lately, they've been, you know, um, going after uh, diversity and inclusion uh, points, and they've been, you know, rewriting rules and coming up with uh, campaign guides and stuff like that to make sure everybody knows how progressive they are, which is their prerogative, but it's also gone beyond that. We saw the, uh, the reaction when TSR attempted to come back, and they said, hey, we're going to be apolitical. We don't want to get uh, political. We think that, you know, gaming has gotten too, quote unquote, woke, and our games are for everybody. Well, they got disinvited from Gen Con, mm -hmm. uh, basically blacklisted. And there are other game companies out there that they're like, well, these companies are problematic because their source book doesn't address, you know, certain kinds of people. I'm yeah, like, but it never can address everybody because every time they have a source book out, there's some other group comes out and they're pissed because they weren't, they weren't included. You're, you, you know, you can't include everything. And like, if you want to go and make a game that is like super, super like, you know, far left or whatever, Go for it. I mean, no one's stopping you, but there was no need to behave the way they behaved on Twitter. Yeah, the, the situation with TSR was one of the most disgusting uh, dog pilings I've ever seen. It did not take much at all. And oh, it's I, Twitter. It never takes much it's at Twitter, all. It's Twitter. But, I mean, for as bad as people think the comic book scene is, as bad as people think the animation scene is, I can tell you just from my armchair observation that tabletop gaming is a hundred times worse. Really? I don't think it's worse than animation. Real, well, maybe not animation, but definitely comic books. People mm -hmm. yeah, talk a lot about comic comics, books, but yes. um, the tabletop gaming scene has become overrun with a lot of uh, activist types and they're not just activists, but like, which, you know, very mental. <laughs> and if 
if you want to make people. if you want to make a game that's political, that's up to you. But the problem is that when they go political in these games, it usually leans one way, and yeah. that's a problem. And when so if you're making games apolitical, so that's about the game and not about politics, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm tired of this whole idea that if you either either go far left or you can't exist at all. That's not that's that's very biased. It's unfair. And we're not even people who lean right and we're saying it's biased and unfair. Yeah. And look, I mean this this conversation's been coming up a lot more, you know, since the the mainstreaming of Dungeons and Dragons. That's really I think what kicked this off. And Dungeons and Dragons became very popular with the Tumblr crowd and a lot of those those uh, political leanings I think sort of bled into you know, what has become the uh, uh, tabletop scene right now, which has become a very, I think, exclusionary... Well, you've been part of the tabletop scene for years and years and years. You was, were. yeah. Yeah, you were. And, it, and back then, you, you were opening, you are welcome and open to everyone, weren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Because um, usually the people that gamed back then, we were we were already outcasts, you know? Well, same with like Star Wars fans and all that stuff. It's a stupid narrative that unless you were a straight white dude, you weren't allowed to be involved. And then they keep running with this narrative. And it's not true no but this this company has made it very very clear that if you're a uh, fascist or a bigot that you're not allowed to buy their well their definition of fascist fascist is stupid and my next thing is they just did this to try to drop publicity that's what this whole thing's yeah, about yeah to get attention but they're they're bigot they're, they're, here's what they're saying and most people would agree with what they're saying yeah yeah uh, most people most normal people would not have a problem with this, but uh, again, this is this is the marketing. It's, it's we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we we uh, market to the right kind of people. So no fascists or bigots are allowed to play thirsty sword lesbians. You must uh, support racial liberation, intersectional feminism. Intersectional and, feminism is a joke, and I will not support that. I will support real feminism. Queer liberation. The other stuff I have no problem with. Respect transgender people. I do. Non, non, non-binary people. I do. Respect to intersex people and women. Yes, because it's all the same. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, respect racialized people, black people, indigenous people, mixed race people, and other kinds of people. Duh. That's you kind should. of most, that's most like, you know, people would This is basically how to be an asshole list. How know? not to be an asshole. But but if you uh, don't uh, do everything on this list, then you are a fascist. Never mind, again, never mind, you know, genocide might be something that you'd want to throw into that mix. Right, right. That's not actually on the list. If you, if, you don't, if you don't respect sex workers, you're basically a Nazi. Um, yeah, respect sex workers, respect disabled people. Yeah, of course. Respect immigrants, you should. Respect lesbians, other people with queer sexualities. Well, wasn't that, why, how, how is this a whole other category? I, I don't know. Respect people experiencing poverty or homelessness. Okay. Respect neurodivergent people, such as those in the autism spectrum. You know what's funny to me? Because people that yell about, you know, try to use it as a crutch or yell about people being autistic are usually the same people that are putting this kind of shit out. You know, I'm just, and I have family members who are autistic. Uh, respect fat people and people of all body types. I'm a fat person. Obviously, I say respect people. Not demand that anyone educate you about their marginalizations. Who's going around? I can't. I... Don't worry. Um, this game is not for us, Geeky. Thirsty uh, Sword Lesbians. We're I, not. I, I, we're I not basically support sword. and respect and do all a lot of this stuff. Um, if you don't agree, fix your heart before sharing a table with other people. Says the people who are call, basically telling you that you're not welcome at their table. If and you, maybe they should fix their heart before sharing the table with other people because they are the ones that are being exclusionary. If you do agree, but you're struggling with self-loathing over any aspect of your identity, that's understandable. We're taught to hate ourselves in so many ways. Come on in and that's let's okay. celebrate. They'll teach you to hate yourself. If you don't agree with them, they're going to teach you to hate yourself more. How is it fashion? Come on in and celebrate the existence and joy of people like us, but no one else is allowed okay, well, there. That's... that's called exclusionary behavior. If you're not like us, you can't sit at our table. That's the same damn thing you're pissed about. God. Um, so here are some of the here are some of the reactions. I don't think this went. I mean, this this message was sent out to the I people they wanted it to get out to. Oh my God. Um, now this is a t Evil Hat Productions, which they do a bunch of different games. Um, actually, some of these, you know, Dresden Files, Fate. You know, these are relatively uh, relatively, you know, normal <laughs> you know, RPGs. I've seen them in a lot of game stores. 
Um, but they're flat out saying, hey, we don't want your money. Um, well, I guess don't give me your money then. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I wonder how your distributors feel about that. We literally don't want or need your money. Um, here we have, I don't purchase products from people who deign the preach to me or demand ideological conformity to buy. I look forward to you uh, filing for That's bankruptcy. That's just it. It was really dumb because they're talking about how they're trying to be against bigotry and exclusionary behavior while they behave in a bigoted and exclusionary manner. Yeah, it's like this isn't going to go the way you think it's going to go. Uh, I know, right? I learned about the injustice and how color changes personal experience uh, and how one sees a winner or loser in everyday life at an early age. Notice how it goes from green one point to red ten points. Everything is political. Everything is political. That's just it. This is why I don't think anybody is is asking. Most people are asking for entertainment to all of a sudden become right wing. We no, just, this would be in the middle and be normal. Just, you know, I mean, the thing is with gaming, and that's that's the thing with, with D&D back in the day, it was like, you know, if you wanted to add special rules for your group... You could. You could, but demanding that other people, or demanding the game be altered to accommodate just you or, you know, whatever, and which we've seen. We've seen these people demand more and more. It doesn't make it exclusionary. Actually, it makes it you kind of arrogant because you think that like the vast majority of people, you have to change game just for but that's, you. Okay, so then they offer this game, um, you know, that it's meant to be for certain demographic of people, which is fine. You well, can do that. Just put it out there. It's not a big deal. But then they couldn't just do that. They had to go put this with it. What if... That's the issue. What if I wanted to play Thirsty Sword Lesbians, but I don't identify as a lesbian, uh... Can I can I still play your game because I, I'm being forced to 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 play a thirsty sword lesbian? What if I'm a lesbian, but I'm not thirsty and I don't know how to use a sword? Mm -hmm. Can I still play your game? Where are the rule where's the rule book for you know uh, dry mouthed, uh, non thirsty, <laughs> quenched, quenched axe lesbians? I I, I, I where's think but, but wait a second, wait a second. Lesbians, not everybody identifies as a lesbian. What about all the, the uh, asexual people, all the bi people, all the non-binary people? There was people. A, a post on Twitter the other day talking about lesbians who don't like women. I'm not kidding. There was. I don't have it in front of me. I so, I mean, it's just funny. like they're being exclusionary, but going on about being inclusive. And that's what's funny to me. Um, you know what? And like I said, it was fine. They put this game out. Cool. You had a, a demographic you wanted to reach. I understand that. That people do that kind of stuff all the time. When you put a book out or a game out or whatever, you're trying to reach a specific demographic. That was fine. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. And then you had to go post this. It was like, why are you so... I don't disagree with this guy. A, a fascist bigot is not going to buy a game called Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Okay. Actually, here's the thing that gets me about all of this. Everybody seems to think that uh, uh, pop culture, that nerd culture is overrun with imaginary Yahtzees. Uh -huh. You do realize that actual fascists and actual Yahtzees don't play, don't play video games and don't play role-playing games and think you're all a bunch of pussies if you play with little action figure dolls. The actual Yahtzees think you're pussies for being into this stuff. They're not paying any attention to it. Mm -mm. Like, seriously. Seriously. This was a flag to throw up to be like, you know, oh, look, we're being, help, help, we're being oppressed by our game. Yeah. Is what this is about. And like I said, if you, you can make games I'm sure for all a these, demographic. All these fascists are going to be upset they can't play a game featuring black lesbians. I mean, look, it's obviously for the audiences for. And that's fine. And that's completely fine. But you don't have to make such a, I mean, this is when you talk about virtue signal. Like, we throw this up because we want everybody to know. We're the good guys. Now, the thing is, it's not just about this game. It's It could potentially blow back on the entire company. Mm -hmm. and uh, They could just put the game out and like, call it a day, but no, no. Yeah, what 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 bigots are going to play a game called Thirsty Sword Lesbians, well, now you unironically? Well, everybody that if they, don't, if, if they don't identify in the ways that you think they should, or if they don't, you know, if they don't like this, and, and, and then they might have bought a different game, that you don't want their money anyway. So now you just told them all you don't want their money no matter what. Well, yeah. that was dumb. I don't know. This is like, I, I, I mean, this isn't even like. An, oh, they were going to get my money anyway. So it doesn't matter. Well, but. this is, yeah, this isn't even like an ironic, like I'm, we're going to put this out there because ha ha, you know, we're going to make the bigots mad. This is like, literally, we it, don't. It, it looks so dumb. It just looks stupid. Because it, it just is like, dumb. you know, we don't want bigots as we're bigoted. 
in our in our response. So now I gotta wonder how many people, like I said, are gonna not play Fate, not play Dresden Files, uh, Monster of the Week, other games that I've literally seen on the shelf at our local game store. If they're gonna be like, well, hey, I don't necessarily agree with politics, and you just said you don't want us to buy your stuff, so I'm not gonna put another order. And, you know, I, yeah, no, and there's the nothing. Is, no wrong. one would have cared, probably thought anything of it until you went. They're like, okay, that's not for me, but it's for another. I, they're trying to reach another demographic. Cool, understandable. And then you did this. I mean, this is this is the fundamental problem right here. Like, okay, fine, whatever. But there's no such thing as an apolitical game. That's actually bullshit. Mm -hmm. They're totally are apolitical games out there and, and most people that you would call fascists or bigots just don't want to have politics shoved in their faces a difference. when they're trying to you know escape to some kind of a hobby but good luck with that i'm not going to tell you how to run your business we'll let the let the market decide what happens right yeah so you know whatever if you, if you no one was saying that you couldn't put these games out no one cared you Nobody just cares. went and made it an issue that it wasn't before who cares who cares? Are we going to wrap this up? Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.